Hi everyone, this is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center. It's around 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, October 9th, coming on with the latest on very dangerous Hurricane Milton nearing landfall along the west coast of Florida this evening. Milton, a powerful hurricane with maximum sustained winds of around 120 miles per hour, currently situated about 60 miles to the west-southwest of Sarasota, moving off to the northeast at 17 miles per hour, so rapidly approaching the coastline of the west-central Florida peninsula. You can see from the radar here a tremendous amount of rain uh, uh, spreading across the central and northern portions of Florida, heavy rainfall, flash flooding. We've We've had multiple tornado warnings uh, across central and south Florida today, and that danger will continue into tonight. So we're going to break down the hazards one by one. First, we're going to focus on the life-threatening storm surge that is about to play out along the Florida west coast, uh, particularly concerned about this area from Anclote River through Tampa Bay, down through Sarasota to Port Charlotte to Fort Myers. Everywhere you see in the orange here has the potential for at least five to six feet of inundation above ground level. 8 to 12 feet in the Fort Myers Charlotte Harbor area, 9 to 13 feet along portions of the coast of Manatee and Sarasota and Charlotte counties from Anna Maria Island to Boca Grande, the potential for six to nine feet of inundation farther north up into the Tampa Bay region. This is life-threatening inundation. That water is going to violently be pushed onto dry land by the winds associated with Milton as it makes landfall this evening, uh, especially near and just to the right of where the center crosses the coast. So hopefully everybody in those storm surge evacuation zones is now out of harm's way. Water is now starting to rise. Winds are picking up. Rain fall is, is occurring and your evacuation routes may be cut off. So please get to a safe place if you have not done so already. I do want to mention that also along the east coast of the Florida Peninsula and southeastern Georgia from Sebastian Inlet northward, the potential for three to five feet of inundation as strong winds on the backside of Milton push water from the Atlantic onto uh, the land here on the east coast of Florida. So dangerous surge expected there, especially as we get into the overnight and early morning hours on Thursday. Uh, let's now talk about the wind. Uh, again, we've seen this wind field of Milton grow as expected as the peak winds have come down a little bit. You can see the extent of the tropical storm force winds is quite large. We've seen the hurricane force wind field expand. The eye is growing in size here in the final hours before landfall. And we are expecting landfall as a major hurricane along the west coast of Florida in the next few hours. And the, uh, Milton expected to remain a hurricane as it moves across the Florida peninsula and then emerges out into the Atlantic tomorrow. Uh, again, Hurricane warnings in effect for much of the state of Florida, uh, from Bonita Beach northward to Sewanee River on the west coast, including Tampa Bay, Port Charlotte, Fort Myers, and from the uh, Martin St. Lucie County line northward to Ponte Vedra Beach on the east coast and everywhere in between, including places like Orlando, Melbourne, Ocala, St. Augustine, much of the central portion of the peninsula, the I-4 corridor is at risk from devastating hurricane force winds, especially in gusts over the inland areas that can cause structural damage, tree damage, widespread power outages, and a very dangerous environment and, and very dangerous situation is gonna play out from west to east across the Florida peninsula as we go from tonight into Thursday. So please be sheltered in a safe place out of, a, out of flood prone areas and be sheltered in place away from windows and doors, away from any trees that could fall on you. Most fatalities due to wind occur due to trees falling on people, cars, or uh, people in homes. Uh, let's move on now to the rainfall threat, which is also substantial and also unfortunately focused in the same I-4 corridor from Tampa to Orlando to Daytona Beach, expecting widespread rainfall totals of six to 12 inches, isolated totals as high as 18 inches in these areas. Some places have already seen six plus inches of rain already, and we we haven't even seen Milton Center make landfall, but near and to the left of the track of the center is where we're going to see that heaviest rainfall play out. And this area highlighted in pink is where we have the highest risk of that life-threatening and potentially catastrophic flash and urban flooding playing out tonight and Thursday. That includes Orlando, Daytona Beach, Tampa, St. Petersburg area, down to Sarasota, down to near Melbourne, with also risk extending north and south of that, uh, maybe in a more isolated fashion. Next, uh, I want to talk about the impacts of that much rain and what that kind of catastrophic flash flooding looks like. You will see water entering homes and businesses. People will be forced to be rescued and evacuated from flooded areas. You're going to have flooded roads that will make uh, moving around and evacuation difficult. And it's going to be a, a very dangerous situation to be out and about. So again, another reason to shelter in place. And again, when you have this much rainfall and this type of flooding, places flood that don't normally flood. And so that's another thing to remember as we go through the night. 
Next, let's talk about the tornado threat, which has been substantial. It played out with many, many tornado warnings, many confirmed tornadoes occurring across central and southern portions of the Florida Peninsula this afternoon. Uh, again, this risk extends through the overnight hours, uh, especially in places along the southeast coast of Florida from Miami northward to Melbourne, but also includes Orlando and Tampa and down, all the way down to the Florida Keys. There's a tornado watch in effect for this area through 9 p.m. tonight will likely be extended into the overnight hours. One important thing to remember is you can have multiple tornadoes or potential tornadoes impact you in the same area as these thunderstorms that we can see here on the radar imagery move over the same area on the uh, east side of the circulation of Milton. Just because you've had one tornado warning and it goes past you doesn't mean you can't be affected by another potential tornado later on. So. As we go through the nighttime hours, we want to have multiple ways to receive weather warnings through your phone alerts turned on on your smartphone, NOAA weather radio. If you still have power, you can use TV. Reach out to your friends and loved ones if you see a warning issued. You want to be able to be alerted if a tornado warning or a flash flood emergency is issued, especially overnight, so that you can get to a safe location. Um, let's talk a little bit now about post-storm safety. We know the storm is just getting started, but in the aftermath of significant hurricanes like Milton, we lose a lot of people to post-storm accidents. So we want to talk about widespread power outages. How do you keep yourself safe? You want to use flashlights and not candles. You want to practice portable generator safety. We lose a lot of people to carbon monoxide poisoning from improper generator use. And you want to be careful with any food and water left in your home without refrigeration. Again, make sure that it's safe to eat. And then also be careful after the storm cleaning up, don't overexert yourself. We have a lot of people succumb to cardiac arrest, heart attacks, other medical issues after the storm. And be careful with the cleanup equipment, chainsaws. And also you have to be careful in the heat, post-storm heat. It's still gonna be Florida. It's still October, it can be very warm afterwards. So again, you wanna be safe after the storm and not become a statistic. So let's wrap up as with these final key points for Milton before landfall in the next few hours. We're expecting a large area of destructive storm surge with inundation of 10 feet or greater above ground level along portions of the west central coast of the Florida Peninsula accompanied with damaging waves and water levels are going to rise rapidly in the next few hours as the eye of Milton approaches the coast and uh, strong onshore winds on the backside of the hurricane will also cause a rapid rise in water after the center makes landfall as well. We're going to see devastating hurricane force winds along portions of the west coast of Florida and across the peninsula to the east coast, especially in gusts as we go through the overnight hours and into Thursday. Uh, devastating hurricane force winds, particularly where the eye of Milton comes on shore along the west central Florida coast. And again, the risk of strong tornadoes will continue through the evening hours across the southern and central portions of the Florida peninsula. If a tornado warning is issued for your area, take shelter in an interior room on the lowest floor of your home. And then finally, the heavy rainfall and flooding threat will continue to play out through tonight and into Thursday in portions of Florida, especially that central Florida Peninsula I-4 corridor with the potential for life-threatening and catastrophic flooding. So please uh, stay safe throughout the event. Keep coming back here to the National Hurricane Center at hurricanes.gov for the latest on Milton. You can get the latest local warnings and information for your area from your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.